Tonight we pick up our study on the wisdom of Proverbs as we seek to learn from the wisdom, knowledge, insight, and understanding of King Solomon and what his sayings, his Proverbs, can mean to us and how we can utilize these lessons in our lives to grow closer in our relationships with God. Today we pick up where we left off last week in chapter 16. We'll start today in verse 4 reading from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. The Lord has prepared everything for his purpose, even the wicked for the day of disaster. So we read in Matthew chapter 25, verse 46, I'll read from the New King James Version. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto eternal life. So we have a division uh, Whenever our time comes before the Lord, when we die physically, uh, we'll go to everlasting punishment. If we have not followed the ways of the Lord, if we have not put Christ, if we have not put uh, God first in our hearts, uh, but the righteous, if we do put God first in our lives, the righteous will go into eternal life. We continue in verse five, everyone with a proud heart is detestable to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. A proud heart, uh, basically we're looking at uh, what we call arrogance, uh, a a self-righteous type of attitude. I've got everything under control myself. I don't need anyone's help. I don't need the help from the Lord. I've got my own thing going on and I can do it myself. That type of attitude uh, is what, King Solomon speaking of uh, when he talks about everyone with a proud heart, uh, he says is detestable to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. Verse five, the Holman Christian Standard Bible. But if we go back to Jeremiah chapter 24, verse seven, we see Lord speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, reading once again from the New King James Version. He says, then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord and they shall be my people and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. It's a heart. There's many passages in the Bible that speak about having a sincere heart or the true thoughts of man is is in his heart. Um, Being superficial is, is what we're referring to as covering up what we really think by just allowing others to see what's on the outside that makes the appearance that maybe we are applying uh, our ways to to the desired way that, that others may want us to be or that we may want others to see. But our true thoughts, our true intentions, we hide in our heart, the Bible teaches us. And it's true. Um, you can say whatever you want. But what are you really thinking? What's really going on up here comes from down here. Your true thoughts, your true intentions all come from within your heart. The Bible teaches us. We'll pick up now in verse six, back in the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Wickedness is atoned for by loyalty and faithfulness. And one turns from evil by the fear of the Lord. Now, the fear of the Lord uh, in this aspect, turning from wickedness, is atoned for by loyalty and faithfulness. So how do we do that? It's through repentance. The Bible teaches us repentance, turning from our old ways of the sinful nature, the ways of this world that are against what God would have of us, turning from that wickedness and being atoned for by loyalty and faithfulness. Loyalty and faithfulness to what, we might ask? To God, to his ways, to opening up our hearts as we learn about Jesus and our Savior, that he came to die for our sins, and we accept that, and place that within our hearts, and begin living that life in faithfulness uh, to God, where Jesus was our atonement on the crosses, he died a sinless life. It's the sinless life, the sinless lamb, if you will, 
that died for our sins and the, the ultimate sacrifice that atoned for all the sins of man. That's why we put our faith in Jesus. That's why we have the uh, the point of, of turning from our old, old ways that Jesus has has died and paid the price for our sins, our wrongdoings, and we repent or turn from that as we believe in our hearts and our minds and our souls that Jesus actually died for our sins. He paid the price for us so that through him, not through us because we've sinned, so we're tainted, but through his sinless life, he died. And the Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death, but Jesus had no sin and he died. So his death is the atonement, the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate payment that overrode all of sin because he was sinless and yet he died. So in that being more powerful than sin and death, it could not hold him. It could not grasp him. So he rose from the dead through God's victory over sin and making Christ Jesus, his son, our savior, our true savior and redeemer. So if we put our faith in him, we repent, we turn from the ways that we lived in sin and we begin living as God would, would lead us, as God would guide us. How's that done? Through what we're doing right now, we learn from studying his word, from opening our heart to him and believing in him. He says uh, in John chapter 14, verses 15 through 18 and verse 26, that he will send his Holy Spirit to live within us, to be our guide. So he is. he will speak to us through his Holy Spirit and show us how we should live in our new repented life following him. Um, that is the, the loyalty of the atonement that we, we have to uh, be faithful to him in following him. So we're striving for our new life in Christ, turning away from our old life of sin. And that is the atonement in Christ. So uh, reviewing this verse six, once again, wickedness is atoned for by loyalty and faithfulness, our loyalty and, and faithfulness, and also Jesus faithfulness to complete his mission in dying for our sins and, and paying that price for us that through his death and his resurrection and life, that if we believe in him, he grants us his righteousness that covers our lives and our past sins and atones for that, that we may live through him and continue in our faithfulness. And one turns from evil, it says, the second part of this verse, by the fear of the Lord. Well, in this case, uh, we can see both aspects of the fear of the Lord, one being uh, what you might think, fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord being if you do not have your wickedness atoned for uh, and gain a loyalty and faithfulness to God, the fear of the Lord truly is a fear of the Lord because what we've just spoke of uh, in verse four, uh, the Lord has prepared everything for his purpose, even the wicked for the day of disaster. If we do not turn from our wicked ways and believe that Christ was the uh, ultimate atonement for our sins and be and put our faith, our loyalty in him, then the fear of the Lord is that the day of disaster is coming. That is a real fear. And we should fear that. But also because of what God has done for us, um, the fear of the Lord is in a sense, a respect for him in submitting our lives and our obedience to him as our creator, as our God, as our sustainer, as our savior, that we understand this and we turn from our wicked ways. We put our faithfulness and our loyalty in Christ Jesus and God through our savior, Christ Jesus, and begin a life 
a repented life living for him that is a fear of the Lord in a aspect of respect and obedience. Verse 7 in the Holman Christian Standard Bible of Proverbs chapter 16, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So as we are striving through a repentance and our faithfulness and loyalty to God, the Bible teaches us this is pleasing to God. This is a, we're building a relationship with him as our creator that he originally designed for us to be and have a relationship and a, a obedience and uh, a, a way of life that is dependent on him and giving him that respect as our creator. When our ways please him and we're following what his plan for us is, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. How wonderful a life would be if even our enemies would be at peace with us. So what would happen there if our enemies were at peace with us? No one would have any enemies. Uh, we're almost describing a, a heavenly sense uh, but it makes makes a peace within us that, you know, if we have enemies, it's one thing to be at enemies and be in argumentation or, or disagreement with each other and have bad attitudes towards one another. But if you take one of those people, change their attitude and practice what Christ has taught us about love everyone, you know, look to be a help. A, a help to everyone in a situation, you know, if your worst enemy were in need, would you help them? Uh, Jesus says, yes, reach out to them. Maybe that might be the moment in their life that they realize, wow, God is great because he's working through this person whom I've had a, a bad relationship with or whatever the case might be, that now that person came to my aid and helped me. And God could work through that to touch that person's life and help them come to a place of repentance that they too would follow this line of, of putting God first in their life and putting their loyalty and faithfulness in God. So I want to stop here today. It's been some good, good uh, lessons that King Solomon is teaching us today. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you that you're teaching us to to follow you and turn from the ways of this world and helping us to understand what the ways of this world are and what your ways are so that we know the, the difference um, to live as you would have us to live, Lord, that we would be the eyes, the arms, the hands, the feet, the legs, the body of Christ today living and showing this world what it means to be faithful and loyal to you. May it be so in all of our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.